Hey everybody, welcome to Monster Monday for June 13th, 2022. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Ruin Grinder from Strixhaven, A Curriculum of Chaos, and some homebrew variants that I have created for it. Now, the Ruin Grinder is one of those monsters that didn't technically come out of the Strixhaven Magic the Gathering set, but it came out from the Magic the Gathering Commander 2021 expansion. So it was co-opted and grabbed and put into the Strixhaven campaign. And it's very possible with the artwork and the timing of the release and some of the lore that's in D&D, that it was intended to be in the, the Strixhaven set, but for whatever reason, it just didn't make it in there. So Ruin Grinder is an artifact creature card, requires six total mana to cast, and one of those mana has to be red. Now, back in the day when I was playing Magic the Gathering, Artifact creatures were always colorless. There was no exception to this. So no specific mana colors were ever required. And I suppose that's not true anymore. Because it, back in the day I was playing, if you saw a red symbol there, you'd say, oh, that's a red card. You wouldn't say that's an artifact card. That is a red card. So I don't know what the deal is there. And it is a seven power, four toughness creature meaning that it deals out more damage to opponents than it can sustain and survive. So it does have the menace keyword, and that means that your opponent must dedicate two or more creatures to block it if it wants to keep that damage from coming through and hitting your opponent itself. It also has two secondary abilities with the card. When it goes to the graveyard, all of the players may discard their hand and draw seven cards from their library. Or, as the player holding the Ruin Grinder, you may pay two mana, discard Ruin Grinder from your hand, and search your library for a mountain card, which is a red mana card. Then discard the Ruin Grinder and shuffle your library. So, it has ways of going through your library and um, its name kind of is a play on that because back in the day we used to call it either milling or grinding when you had an effect that would cause yourself or cause your opponent to go through the cards in their library and uh, use those cards up more quickly. All right, so that is the uh, Ruin Grinder card from Magic the Gathering. Now let's take a look at the Ruin Grinder from D&D. So they're described as excavation tools in the Friends and Foes section of the Strixhaven Campaign Sourcebook. However, within the body of the campaign, we never see them excavating. We only see them being used like forklifts. So they're carrying cargo boxes across one part of campus from one location to another location. And they feature in an encounter because they have malfunctioned due to some outside force, and they no longer perform their assigned tasks. So they're presented as monsters the PCs are not supposed to fight. But the party can attempt to recalibrate the Ruin Grinder and get them back to work so that they can complete the tasks that they were assigned to do. So the description we get in the campaign is like this. They're created by the Archaeomancers of Warhol College. Ruin grinders are mighty automatons built to excavate ancient ruins and artifacts. The massive toothed shovels attached to a ruin grinder's arms tear through millennia-old bedrock with ease, leading some Warhol mages to fear that the grinders destroy more history than they unearth. And then... We don't get a whole lot about the tactics, but while they're not designed as fighting machines, the Ruined Grinders can attack with the excavating shovels on their arms. These not only deal a fair amount of damage, but they also can knock an enemy prone and push them away. So those attacks have the ability to both push and knock an enemy prone, which of course, both of those mess around with battlefield placement and knocking it prone eats up half of your movement to 
it up. And no surprise here, creature type is a construct. They are very much like golems, uh, which are the humanoid automatons that you see made of different materials and throughout D&D lore. They're, some of them are programmed by their creators to follow a set of, simple set of instructions. Others have some level of sentience capable of independent thought. But in all cases, the constructs are made and not born. That is the important thing. Ruin Grinder, as written, is a foe for Tier 1 characters. It has an armor class of 16, 82 hit points, which is derived as 11 to 10 plus 22. Has a move and burrow speed of 30 feet, and it's a CR5 monster with a proficiency bonus of plus 3. So the ability scores are fairly above average in all of the physical stats. So strength is very high, dex is okay, constitution is pretty good. But the intelligence and charisma are really low, and the wisdom, well, the wisdom is kind of just barely enough for it to do what it needs to do. So it's got an attack bonus of plus 9, damage bonus of plus 6, and the full attack are two excavator attacks. Each of those deals 2d6 plus 6 force damage. Now, it's not slashing damage, it's not piercing, it's not bludgeoning, it's force damage. And huge or smaller creatures must make a DC 17 strength save or be pushed up to 10 feet and not prone. Now, just a little note there, it's important that you distinguish that it's force damage because if one of your characters has like a feature or has an item that says, oh, this gives me resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and uh, slashing damage. Hey, well, when this thing hits you, it's neither one of those, it's force damage. Do you have resistance to force damage? Probably not. There's very few items and very few features in D&D 5e that do give you resistance or immunity to force damage. Now, speaking of the creature's immunities, the Ruined Grinder has immunity to fire and poison damage. It also has immunity to the charmed, exhausted, frightened, petrified, and poisoned conditions. And it has several other special abilities fire absorption. So when it's subjected to fire, the Ruined Grinder doesn't take any damage. Instead, it gains hit points equal to half the fire damage dealt. So you hit it with a fireball. Say the fireball does 24 points of damage. Well, the Ruined Grinder won't take any, won't take 24 points of fire damage, but if it's injured, it will heal up to 12 points from that fireball. Then it's also considered a siege monster, so the Ruined Grinder deals double damage to structures and objects. And it's a tunneler. So the Ruined Grinder can burrow through solid rock and leaves a 10-foot diameter tunnel in its wake. And its burrow speed is 30 feet, so it can go through solid rock just as fast as it can walk. So it's a very powerful uh, excavating machine in that respect. Here are some of the variants that I created. Now, last week you may have been wondering, well, how was I going about creating the variants on these things? Well, what I do is I look at the family of uh, creatures that exist in the same creature type. So for this instance, I said, let me look at all of the existing constructs that are official to D&D. And I know what sort of CR I'm looking for, so I want to look for other constructs of CR and put these in line with those types of monsters. So what it means is in some cases it means I take a stat block from an almost, you know, almost whole cloth from an existing construct and reskin it a little bit to make it a more powerful version of Ruin Grinder. And the reason that I'm doing it that way 
is because I am looking to create monsters that can't be used in the widest variety of D&D homebrew games. Now, there's lots of fantastic sites out there where people make all kinds of imaginative monsters. And for your homebrew games in your table, I highly encourage you to make your own homebrew monsters that are keyed to the strength and abilities and capabilities and features of the players at your table. The problem with creating homebrew monsters like that and then putting it up on a site for everybody to use is that not everybody's game runs the same way your game does. So not every homebrew monster that you make is going to be applicable to every other situation. And the same is true here. But what I am trying to do is I'm trying to take something and say, if I'm calling this creature I'm making a CR10 monster, I want it to be relatively balanced compared to other official CR10 constructs that Wizards of the Coast has put out there. Because that way, you know if you take this and you put it into a game for a CR10 monster, you're not going to overpower what your players would be expecting to face in a CR10 opponent. Now, if you put them up against a CR10 opponent when they're level 3, you're going to kill them because level 3 parties don't have any business fighting a CR10 monster. But if they are level appropriate, then it's going to be a challenge similar to other CR10 monsters that you would find from official sources. So that's, that's what I'm going for here when I'm creating these variants. I'm not trying to make player killers. I'm not trying to make the most fancy or the craziest version of a uh, Ruin Grinder variant that I can. I'm just trying to make monsters that you can say, oh, you know, I'd really like to use a Ruin Grinder, but my party's the wrong level, so or party's in the wrong tier. So what can I find to throw against them? Just a little spiel about that. All right, so the tier two ruin grinder is a creature that I call the power grinder. Now, I'm not an artist, so I didn't make up any artwork for any of these, so I'm just presuming these all pretty much look like the standard ruin grinder. But this one has an armor class of 17, has 144 hit points, so now that's 17 d10 plus 51. The speed is 30 feet with a bro, 30 feet CR of 10, proficiency bonus plus 4. Again, the stat block is pretty similar to the original Ruin Grinder. The one thing is the dex is a little bit lower. Now the attack bonus is plus 10, damage bonus is still plus 6. And it gets uh, still gets 2 attacks two excavator attacks, but now the damage for those attacks is a little bit higher. It's now bumped up to 3d6 plus 6 force damage, and huge or smaller creatures must make a DC 18 strength check or be pushed up to 10 feet and knocked prone. Also, the power grinders attacks are considered magical for anything that has resistance to non-magical attacks. Well, now the power grinders attacks are magical, so that resistance goes away. Uh, in terms of the resistances for the power grinder, it resists poison, psychic, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks that aren't adamantine. And it has magic resistance, so it gets saving throws against spells and other magical effects. Now immunities, it's still immune to fire and poison damage and immune to the charm, exhaust, fright, paralyzed, petrified, and poison conditions. So other special abilities, it still has that fire absorption, which still works the same way. Uh, gains hit points equal to half the fire damage dealt. Siege monster and tunneler. All of those work exactly the same as the standard power or standard ruin grinder. We have the tier three ruin grinder. And this one I call the ruin excavator. 
So the armor class is now bumped up to 20. It's 210 hit points, which is 20 D10 plus 100. The speed is 30 feet with a burrow speed of 30 feet, CR of 16, and proficiency bonus of plus 5. Now, the strength and the con have both bumped up. So strength is now 24, and the con is a 20. The attack bonus is plus 13. Damage bonus is plus 7 because of that escalated strength. So now it has three attacks instead of just two attacks. Gets those two excavator attacks. Those are 3d6 plus 7 force damage. It's a DC 20 strength save to avoid being pushed and not prone. The third attack is a recharge attack, and that is an acid spray attack. It's a range, it's 30 foot stream, 5 feet wide, DC 20 constitution save, or take 10 D8 acid damage, or half damage on a successful save. And ruin excavators are, yeah, ruin excavators attacks are magical. So it resists poison, psychic, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks that are adamantine, magical resistance, the immunities. Now it picks up immunity to acid, fire, and poison damage. Uh, also immune to charm, exhausted, fright, and paralyzed, petrified, poison conditions. Now, the other special abilities are the same. Fire absorption still heals for half the fire damage, siege monster, and tunneler. So that is the tier 3 ruin grinder. And now last but not least, let's go to the tier 4 ruin grinder. And this one I call the demolisher. I was trying to come up with a, a cool name for it, but I couldn't think of any other cool name, so just the Demolisher. You could probably come up with a cooler name than that uh, for this if you decide to use it in your campaign. So the armor class for this bad boy is 22. It has 273 hit points, which is 26 D10 plus 130. It has a speed and a movement and burrow speed of 30. CR 22 and proficiency bonus of plus 7. So the ability scores here are the same as the tier 3, so strength of 24, dex of 9, and constitution of 20, with the intelligence, wisdom, and charisma having stayed the same all the way through. Attack bonus is plus 13, damage bonus is plus 7. Now this one jumps from having three attacks per round to five attacks per round. So its full attack is four excavator attacks, and each of those do 3d6 plus 7 force damage, and the strength save to avoid being pushed back or not prone has jumped up to 21. And there's an acid spray, which is the same 30 foot stream, five feet wide, DC 21 constitution save, or take 10d8 acid damage. Uh, half damage on a successful save. The attacks are magical. Resistances, uh, all of the same resistances that we've had before. Immunities, all the same immunities that we've had before. And now the special abilities, there's one difference with this one on its fire absorption. This time at the tier four level, instead of gaining uh, half of the hit points for fire damage dealt to it, it gains all of the hit points. So this time, if you hit this one with a 24 hit point fireball, instead of ignoring the damage and healing for 12, this time it ignores the damage and heals for all 24 points of the fireball. So. This one uh, is a significant little step up. And as I said, all of these are based on existing uh, constructs that Wizards of the Coast has already created at these similar uh, challenge ratings. So 
they are not entirely out of line with what those other monsters do. Uh, for example, the CR-22 version of a construct that I found was uh, basically a CR-22 iron golem out of Dungeon of the Mad Mage that also has a whole bunch of spell casting. So it doesn't have the five attacks per round, but it's able to use up to eight level spells and attack you with eight level spells. And it's like, yeah, okay, Ruin Grinder doesn't, I don't see any reason why they would imbue the Ruin Grinder with spell casting ability if they made more powerful versions of them. It just would, you know, be something that would be intended for uh, a bigger job, if you will. And uh, so I said, yeah, forget the spell casting. To make it more of a challenge, I'm going to bump up the uh, number of attacks per round. So that's where that all came from. All right. I want to thank you all for watching. If you've been watching this far, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, and click the post notification bell. I have been DM Galabine. This has been Monster Monday, all about the Ruin Grinder. Next week, we are going to continue to take a look at the monsters from the Strixhaven campaign by taking a look at one of the founder dragons, and that is Shadrick's Silver Quill. All right, you can find me on the internet on live streams three nights a week, usually Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m. It's our fifth edition uh, planeswalking game will be crossover between 5e and Magic the Gathering. Wednesday nights, 8 p.m., it's our Sword Coast Chronicles 5th edition game where we tell an original storyline through the lens of published 5e campaigns. We are right now in the middle of the uh, Tomb of Annihilation campaign. And then Saturday Night Greyhawk, Saturday nights at 7.30 p.m., we uh, look at 2nd edition D&D, play with 2nd edition rules, and this is sort of a greatest hits of the old classic modules. Right now, we are grinding our way through the, the original Temple of Elemental Evil. So, if you've only heard about that game, maybe you've played Princes of the Apocalypse in 5th edition, and you heard, oh, this was inspired by Temple of Elemental Evil. I wonder what that's like. Well, you can come to watch our game on Saturday night and see what our version of Temple of Elemental Evil is like. It's the same adventure, but it's just slightly retuned for second edition rules instead of first edition rules that it was written for. All right, so that is where you can find me. And then on Fridays, most Fridays, I put up a War Friday video. Ran out of time this week, didn't get one up. So hopefully this coming week, there will be one uh, that usually pops during the day. And that's also straight to YouTube, just like Monster Monday. All right, everyone, thank you so much. Take care and watch out for the monsters under the bed. Good night, everybody.